Hello. In this video series, we're going to explore the Little Man computer and how the Little Man computer is a really good learning tool to learn about how CPUs work. So I have here in front of me the Little Man computer. On the left, we have space in which we can write some assembly language code. And on the right, we have the computer model. So the first part of the computer model is we have the CPU, which stands for the central processing unit. And in the central processing unit, we have a variable called the program counter, which starts at zero. So when the CPU is first initialized, the program counter is set to zero. We have an instruction register, which does not have any value upon initialization. And we have the address register, which again does not have a value upon initialization. At the bottom of the CPU, we have the accumulator, which is initialized to a value of zero. And attached to the CPU, we have what is known as the arithmetic unit. This is also known as the arithmetic logic unit. And we can see here that the CPU is connected to the arithmetic logic unit by some data lines. Likewise, the CPU has a connection to an input field here. The input field allows the user to type in values. And likewise, there is an output field also connected to the CPU, which allows for any output the CPU needs to show. The final connection to the CPU is this data line, which goes to the block of RAM on the right. The RAM for the Little Man computer consists of space for 100 values, which we can see here, 0, 1, 2, etc., all the way up to 99, giving us 100 spaces at which we can put the values. And then for each space in which you can put a value, there is a field in which we can type a number. The spaces for the values are known as the RAM address, and the values themselves are known as the value. So for example, I can change the value of the number at RAM address 24 to be 500. Likewise, the value of the RAM address at 47, I can change to be 40, and so on and so on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run the little man computer. Okay, so something happened there, but what happened? So we can go ahead and restart our little man computer. And at the bottom, we can select a slow mode. The first thing that's going to happen to the little man computer is that this program counter is going to tell the CPU where to get its next instruction. So because this value is initialized to the value of zero, it will look at the RAM address of zero to get the instruction. And we see here that the value in the RAM address of zero is zero, zero, zero. So let's go ahead, play that again. So you can see here, the value zero on the program counter comes down and it splits into two. One of these values has one added to it by the arithmetic logic unit, which then returns back to the program counter. So the program counter is incremented by one during this initial fetch cycle. So this first part of the CPU operation is called the fetch cycle. And if you look at the top, we see that the value in the RAM address of zero was extracted and is making its way back down the data line towards the CPU. And go ahead and speed this up slightly. And when it gets to the CPU, we're going to see two things happen. This value, which was pulled from the RAM, will be split. Two of the digits will go into the address register and one digit will go into the instruction register. Now let's go ahead and run this again. We see now that the program counter was set to one, so it makes its way down the data lines. One of these values goes to the arithmetic logic unit where it's incremented to the number two. So the program counter is going to be set to the number two. Likewise, the other value, which is traveling down the data lines, which was the address to fetch, is going to the address location one. And again, it's fetched the value from one, which again, as the previous value is zero, zero, zero. This will make its way back down towards the CPU. In which it will be split into the address register and the instruction register. What's useful about the little man computer is that at the bottom, it tells us what it's doing. So we can see that when we run the next instruction, 
This is the fetch cycle, and it's telling us let's get to the current instruction and add one to the program counter. So this two will be incremented to three, so the program counter will now be three. And this fetch cycle is fetching the value from memory address two, which was the value in the program counter. We saw there how it got the value in memory location two, and let's bring it back to the CPU in order for it to be split into the instruction register and address register. So that was the fetch cycle. And we see the simulation stops there because this instruction 000 is a special instruction which says halt program execution. There's nothing to be done. Next, we're going to look at a fetch execute cycle. So a fetch execute cycle is one in which it does something. So I'm going to change some values in memory and let's see what happens. So if I change this value here in the first memory location to be 102 and the value in the third memory location, which is indexed as memory location two, I'm going to add a value here of 99. Let's go ahead and run this program again. So we've reset the CPU. So the program counter has gone to a default value of zero. Likewise, the accumulator has been initialized zero and the instruction and address registers are empty. When we click run, we see the fetch cycle, get to current instruction and add one to the program counter. We can see one being incremented to the program counter now, which this value one will go back to the program counter. And we see the value zero going to fetch the next instruction. The instruction here is 102. We can see as it makes its way into the RAM at memory location zero, it's going to pick up the value 102 and then bring that back to the CPU. And now watch what happens as this value makes its way back to the CPU. We have the value one, zero and two. The two is extracted from the 102 and the one is also extracted. The one is placed in the instruction register and the two is placed in the address register. And now this is a valid instruction. We can see at the bottom that the instruction is add. And the instruction says add to the accumulator the contents of RAM address two. We can see here in red that the value at memory address two is going to be retrieved. There we are, it's switched to blue and we now have the value 99 coming back down the data lines from the RAM. And as per the instruction, it says here, add to the accumulator. So we're going to watch this value 99 and see what happens to the accumulator. We see that the current value of the accumulator went towards the arithmetic logic unit, as well as a value retrieved from RAM of 99. They were added together and moved back into the accumulator. Now the next part of the CPU executes, we can see it's gone to the next fetch cycle in which the program count was one, which was then incremented to two. And then the instruction from address one is going to be retrieved since that was the value of the program counter. And there we go, it retrieves the next instruction, which was zero, 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 which as we've said before, is a special instruction indicating the CPU to halt execution. And we can see here, the address register will be stripped to zero. Likewise, the instruction register will be stripped to zero and the program has halted. So that's a very simple computer program in which all we've done is change three values in memory with the first value being the add instruction with an address, the second value being the stop execution instruction and the third value being the value that we wish to add to the accumulator. So let's go ahead and look at this in a bit more detail. And so if we take what we've just done we can categorize it like this. We had memory address, location zero, memory address one, and memory address two. So memory is contiguous in that the next address simply increments by one at a time. We loaded in the value 102 into the first address, the value zero, zero, zero into the next address, and the value zero, nine, and nine. Now the way that a smart computer works 
is that the values in the RAM can be anywhere between minus 999 to 999. So it accepts three digits with base 10 with either an implied positive sign or a negative sign. And for now, let's just get rid of that. So the first thing we did is we always do a fetch execute cycle. So the program counter, which was set to zero, the instruction is then fetched from the memory location zero. So the current instruction would be this instruction 102. And it's broken down as follows. So out of the three digits, X, Y, and Z, the first value is the instruction. And the next value is either the address or a special code. And so the instruction one equals add and therefore yz equals address. And so that's what we saw when this instruction was fetched. We ended up with a one in the instruction register and a two in the address register. Is what we can see here. One in the instruction register, two in the address register. And so what happened on the execute cycle, so this was the fetch cycle, the execute cycle, added the value at mem location two to the accumulator. Which again, we can see here, fetched the value at memory address two, brought that value towards the CPU, And we saw there, it took the valid current value of the accumulator and the value we've just fetched from communication two, which was 99, added them together in the arithmetic logic unit, and then put them back in the accumulator. So that's the fetch and execute cycle that we've just seen. The program counter at the same time was also incremented from zero to one, which means during the next fetch cycle, we fetched the value 000 from the RAM at memory location one. And 000 is special in that all we need to do is if there is a zero here, this is the halt instruction, which means stop execution. That program was complete. What's interesting to note here is that we had to be careful. Every time we fetch an instruction to decode, the program counter is incremented by one. And so if this instruction here was not a halt instruction, the program counter will have incremented to two, depending on this instruction. If the program counter was two, we would then be left with a situation which would try and execute this value. Now in this particular case, this was fine, because as we've seen, if it tries to execute this value as an instruction, it would have 099, and we would simply get the halt instruction, and the program would stop. So this 99 would be ignored. But what have, would happen if this value was instead 199? Let's go ahead and run one extra cycle of our execution with 199 in address two. And we'll put in address 99, we're going to put the value 20. Watch what happens now. So I'll run next instruction which is our original halt. So let's pretend that we didn't halt and then we had to go to a new instruction. See the program counter is now at two. And so we're going to fetch the instruction at memory location two. As we can see, the value two will make its way down both the data line and into arithmetic logic unit in order to increment the program counter by one. So let's follow the fetch. So the fetch will fetch this value 199 from memory location two, bring it towards the CPU. Once in the CPU, it will be split into the instruction one and the address 99. So one is the add instruction, remember, and 99 is the address. And we can see at the bottom there that the value 99 is now being fetched. 
and because the instruction was interpreted as add to the accumulator the contents of RAM at address 99. So we see here, the address at 99 is going to be picked up, which was the value 20. This will then make its way back towards the CPU. And what we'll see happen now is that the value of the accumulator and this value 20 will both be sent towards the arithmetic logic unit, added together, and then placed back in the accumulator. And now you'll notice that the program continues because 199 was not a halt instruction. So the value three from the program counter is incremented to four and returned back to the program counter. And we're in a new fetch cycle in which the value three is going to be taken to the RAM. And so the value stored in the memory location three will be brought back to the CPU. Luckily in this case, the value brought back will be zero, zero, zero which is the halt instruction. And this architecture is known as the von Neumann architecture. There is no distinction here in, in the RAM between an instruction and a value. This 102 was an instruction because when we were at the memory address zero, it was fetched as an instruction. This value 199, we intended it to be a value but it's quite possible that this value could be fetched and interpreted as an instruction. And there are nine instructions in the little man computer, which we can see by going to the Wikipedia page. You can see here, it gives us a description of each of the commands. So one followed by something is the add, two followed by something is subtract, three followed by something is store at address, Five is load at address, six is branch, seven is another branch, eight is another branch, nine is either an input or output, depending on the next two digits, and zero is the halt command. So I hope you found that interesting. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can make programming this computer much, much easier by using an assembly language. So rather than typing in values in the RAM itself, we can go ahead and type in some fairly readable code on the left, such as this, which as we can see, once assembled into the RAM, gives us the same memory, but this is much more readable. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two.